Assalamualaikum and good day. In this lecture, we will discuss about some of the case studies in relation with material index. Okay, here is the outline for this lecture. As for the introduction, each case study is laid out in a volume way. First, the problem statement setting the scene. Then, we go for the translation, identifying function, constraints, objectives, and free variables from which emerge the attributes limits and material indices. The selection in which the full menu of material is reduced by screening and ranking to a short list of viable candidates. The postscripts allowing a commentary on results and philosophy. Here are some examples for the case studies in case for materials for alls. As you can see in this figure over here, this horse is used for rowing, rowing a boat over here. And then you have a diagram, okay, the diagram of the horse, which having a handle, collar, sleeve, and spoon. And then over here, the functionality or the movement of the function of the horse is shown in, in this figure. And then we go for the translation, which is an OS is essentially a beam loaded in bending, as you can see in the previous six, uh, figure 6.11. So OS must be strong enough to not to break, but they are designed on stiffness to give a specific elastic deflection under a given load. Means that whenever the OS is subjected to bending, but it's sufficient enough to give a thrust from the OS to the water, and then it's not breaking up and then it must be lightweight extra weight increases the drag on the hull Oars must also be tough enough to withstand being dropped or crashing together okay given that the mass which is equivalent to m which is equivalent to the cross section a cross section area a okay multiplied by the length of the oars l and the density of the material rho. So we can rearrange this uh, equation of mass, which is equivalent to m equivalent to pi times radius power of two times length times the density. Okay, the stiffness of the beam is shown in this equation over here which is equivalent to S okay which is equivalent to C E I okay C is the constant for the uh, cross section okay we have different cross section different constants okay and then E is for the modulus of elasticity I is the second moment of area and L is the length so C for example, in case for uh, square cross section will be 48. As for the I, uh, in referring to the uh, circular cross section will be pi radius power 4 divided by 4. Okay, this is the output for, from the translation which in the table of the design requirement we have function, objective, and constraints, and free variables for the OS. So for the function for the OS is actually to rowing, okay, for the rowing for of the boat. So the function will, will be the uh, light and stiff beam, okay, and the objective is to minimize the mass, which is to reduce weight, and the constraint, which which is the length, need to be specified, okay, length is fixed. Bending stiffness S is also specified, so depend on the requirement. And then the toughness G1C must be bigger than 1 kJ per meter square. And then the free variable, which is the shaft diameter, okay, which contribute to the radius also. Okay, and also the choice of material. Next, when you have the objective, which is to reduce mass, you can derive the material index using the stiffness equation and the second moment area into the mass equations. So from this equation, okay, 
from this equation, you insert these two into these equations. Okay. So probably in step by step, uh, for the derivation of the equation will be in the next slide over here. So you have m is equivalent to a l rho, and then a which is equivalent to pi r or pi radius power of two, and then we rearrange back this equation, and then insert this equation, okay, from the second moment of area. And then we rearrange back into R and then put this R over here. Okay, put this R over here into here. Okay, and then this S over here, S is equivalent to the CEI, okay, divided by L power of 3, which is the stiffness. So convert into the I form over here and insert back into this equation. So you have actually this kind of equation. Then when you finally rearrange this equation, you finally get these uh, two different functions. Okay, for example, the first one is the uh, force and then the dimension. And then the lastly is the material properties. So lastly, we arrange this only. Eh? It doesn't matter whether you put in this way or, or three function and so on. So the final output will be this one. So Actually, in the earlier form of the metric indices, will be the indexes will be the rho divided by e power of half. Huh? But you need to rearrange back, inverse this equation into this kind of form. Using the material index M1 that you have derived, okay, which is the uh, Young modulus, okay, Young modulus power of half divided by the uh, density rho okay, that you have derived okay you can use it as a guideline okay you can use it as a guideline over here this guideline okay in this figure so the appropriate selection plots of young modulus against density young modulus again density over here and then the selection line of material index has a slope of two and it is positioned so that a small group of material is left above it. Okay, above this guideline will be the selected material or the narrow down material or the shortlisted material. The lower part of this guideline will be neglected. Okay. Another material plot that you have to consider which is the fracture toughness versus the young modulus. So you can use the toughness GC in the design requirement table. You can set the guideline at toughness 1 kJ per meter square. They contain three, three classes of materials, which is wood, carbon fiber, uh, carbon reinforced polymer, and the certain ceramics. So as you can see, ceramics are brittle. So the toughness modulus chart in the figure 4.7 shows that all fail to meet the requirement of the design. From the two charts, you can have four material as candidates for the ore. Ceramics are brittle and fail to meet the toughness constraint of the design. Composite blades are lighter than wood for the same stiffness and offer greater control of properties. Until a recent carbon fiber reinforced plastic ores cost more than a wood one. But the price of carbon fibers has fallen sufficiently that the two costs about the same. So basically, the original one will be the wood, but the current one will be the carbon fiber reinforced plastic. So previously, the carbon fiber is quite expensive compared to nowadays. So nowadays, you can buy the carbon fibers in, for example, in the Home Depot or the Viva Home. Okay. Here is another example for case study which related to the mirror of a large telescope. As you already know, the mirror for the telescope, the big one, need to be as smooth as possible and then you need to have the, the best quality of reflection. Okay, but the problem is that when you make it into uh, from a uh, from glass for example is very brittle and hard to be made and then the weight 
imagine the weight for example in this case in russia you have six meter made from rigid glass and the thickness is one meter and this weight as 70 tons it's very heavy so you have a big problem for example in handling this uh, mirror so for example uh, how would you to transport from the manufacturer to the telescope and then what kind of the uh, stage that you can use to support this kind of material okay which is quite brittle and so on of course in case for the translation for the mirrors for the large telescope okay at its simplest the mirror is a circular disc with diameter 2r which is r is the radius and thickness t so when horizontal it will deflect under its own weight width okay so you have to imagine that this mirror having a bending when you have two support at the end of both sides so this distortion must be small so it does not interfere with the performance so whenever this mirror is deflected a little bit so you can get a very worse detail lah. so this means that the deflection of the midpoint of the mirror should be less than the wavelength of light means it's better not moving at all lah. Additional requirements are high dimensional stable and low thermal expansion. So you need a mirror that is very stable enough in dimensionally, which cannot change uh, with the temperature applied or for example room temperature to the slightly above like 35 degrees Celsius. So this kind of the requirements will be the constraints. So given the mass of the mirror is M, which is equivalent to pi radius power of 2 which is the uh, the area of the uh, mirror and then times thickness of the mirror and then times the density of the mi mirror and then the elastic deflection okay so you have the constraint over here deflection is the wording that you need to concern so the elastic deflection delta which is equivalent to 3 divided by 4 pi times mass times gravity times radius power of 2 divided by mod Young modulus and then divided also by thickness power of 3. So from this blank table of design requirements, you can insert this content over here. Okay, so the function will be the precision mirror. It should be a very high precision mirror. And then the objective is to minimize the mass M. Okay. And then the constraint will be the radius R. Okay. Need to be specified. And then must not distort more than delta under self weight. So R and delta is having a value actually. And then need to be high dimensionally stable without creep and low thermal expansion. So you have to put the delta equation for the de uh, for the deflection, and then the free variables, which is obvious, is the material of material choice and also the thickness of the mirror. So you have to balance between the thickness and also the deflection. So it's okay for you to have a very high thickness so that you can have a dimensionally stable mirror, but it comes with a huge cost and also the the weight okay the weight will increase tremendously so here from the mass equation insert the deflection equation by replacing the thickness okay from this equation change into this t form okay and then insert it here okay and then finally you can get this kind of equation then obviously from here this one is related to the force function here is the dimensionally dimension uh, factor or functions and here will be the material function so this one will be the material index 
okay from the material index m1 you can use it as a guideline so that you can sort out or you can narrow down or list out the material that can be used so in the table 6.4 over here okay you have a uh, materials that be that should be uh, qualified uh, as per the material index so over here you have steel you have a glass fiber reinforced plastic aluminum alloys glass magnesium alloys carbon fiber reinforced plastic and foam polystyrene so all these materials should be uh, more than enough or complying the material index so you need to actually calculate the material index for each material over here so you can see over here you have steel which is having the lowest material index uh, value which is 0 0.74 and then the foam polystyrene which is 4.5 which is very good and then you have to calculate the mass for each material given a specific radius which is 5.1 meter so you can see the lowest one will be the polystyrene foam which is having a 5 ton only 5 ton in comparison with the steel which is 73.6 ton okay so big difference like uh, 10 times much more uh, massive uh, much more heavier compared to the foam polystyrene but however you need to consider the other properties such as the uh, transparent transparency or opacity or reflective and so on so you need to actually uh, give some comment over here so for example the steel will be very heavy which is the original choice and then glass fiber reinforced plastic which is not dimensionally stable enough but you can use for the radio telescope okay and then you have aluminum alloys which is heavier than glass and with high thermal expansion okay you have already know that aluminum is easily to conduct thermal and also electrical and then you have the glass which is the present choice and then you have the magnesium alloys which is, should be lighter than glass but high thermal, uh, thermal expansion similar as aluminum alloys and then you have a carbon fiber reinforced plastic which is very light but not dimensionally stable but it can be used for the radio telescope and then you have foam polystyrene very light but dimensionally not stable but is it possible to to form a foam glass okay but it's actually not a good choice huh? because a foam material is not reflective enough because we have foam and then we have pores and then the light will not go reflective from the surface it's actually absorbed or going through so over here uh it's actually in detail when you use the cs edupack or granta edupack so when you move the guidelines uh, manually for using using the mouse cursor over here up and down over here so you actually notice that glass lies on the line which is actually on the line so material which lie above it are better than glass and those below it will be worse so glass is much better than steel or specular material or specular metal that is why most mirrors are made of glass which is obvious but it's less good then magnesium beryllium silver ceramics uh, carbon fiber and glass fiber reinforced plastic polymers and expected finding stiff foam polymers another case study which is the materials for the table uh, as you can see over here the name designer name luigi uh, tavolino of which a furniture designer so uh, he want to make or he or she want to make a table with a very slender leg okay we have a slender leg over here so should be the leg should be a lightweight table with slender cylindrical legs and then lightness and slenderness are independent design objective so constrained by the requirement that the leg must not buckle must not buckle when the table is loaded so go for the translation design requirement you have the function of the leg which is the column supporting the table over here with uh, compressive loading obviously 
and then the objective you have two actually first one which is minimize mass this one need to be as light as possible and then you without buckling and then you need to maximize maximize also the uh, the slenderness okay, this one need to be thin as possible okay so the objective you have two so you should have two meter index one come from the mass another one co come from the slenderness so the constraints the l must be specified okay obviously as a designer you need to specify or the length need to be fixed and then must not buckle under design loads which is the compression loading and then must not fracture if as accidentally stuck but they hit and uh, the 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 leg over here so can cause fracture or break broken over and so on uh. and then the free variables will be the material choice and the diameter of the legs will be two radius two r so obviously you have one equation which is the mass which is came from the a times l times rho and then you derive back over here because this leg is made from cylindrical material and then you need to insert the force equations okay you need to insert the force equation use the force equation over here critical uh, sorry this one is should be the buckling force so buckling force need to be related with the second moment obviously and then need to be related with the length so you derive this equation by changing the i over here which is the second moment area which is equivalent to r power 4 divided by 4 okay and then times pi is actually yeah. so from here you replace this one it is i so from here you erase this force or buckling force equation into r equation over here and then just replace this equation from here to here only and then finally you can get this kind of three different function okay one is the force function here is the dimension function lastly is the material function so obviously this one will be the material index of course you need to inverse it because we use the young modulus versus density now the second metric index will be the one which is related to the slenderness so you need to inverting this equation from the buckling force over here then you can get r and then use that r okay to form a to get the metric index over here so obviously the r is which is related to e over here so here the young modulus which is actually the material index number two m2 so using this material property charts you have to use these two guidelines one is m1 which is the material index number one which is related to young modulus divided by density and then the second one which is, is actually a fixed one which is uh m2 need to be equivalent to 100 more than 100 gigapascal so it's quite easy okay all below here cannot be used all below here also cannot be used so you have the shortlisted material which is the glass fiber reinforced plastic and woods and ceramics and also carbon fiber reinforced plastic of course for for you to doing the uh, ranking so you need to calculate the metal index for here for example m1 metal index m1 which is related to young modulus and density so the the higher value which is much more better which is the carbon fiber reinforced plastic and then the uh, m2 which is the metal index number two so it's related with the young modulus so you just put the young modulus value of each material of these four into here so you can get here is the glass fiber reinforced plastic which is 20 wood is 10 ceramic is 300 and then the carbon fiber reinforced plastic will be 100 so over here 
actually you can have two type of material that can be used because this one is CD100 gigapascal for the young models. So over here you have two choices. The one will be the carbon fiber reinforced plastic, but this one will be quite expensive as you know. Carbon fiber reinforced plastic is very expensive. And then uh, the ceramics, okay, the ceramics, this one is quite brittle, so you cannot use this one, okay. So over here, it should be the carbon fiber reinforced plastic. Eh? Okay, polymers you cannot use because this one is very ductile, material, uh, metal is too heavy, and so on. Here is much more clear view when you use the two metal index M2, M1 over here. Okay, then you compare side by side over here. For the case study related to the materials for the flywheels, okay, you know that flywheels is a rotating device that store rotational energy, okay, in the application for the automotive transmission. So, an efficient flywheel, the best flywheel, will store maximum energy per unit per volume, per unit volume mass at a specified angular velocity. So, the kinetic energy of the device can store is limited by the material themselves. So this wording is quite wording, uh, it's quite weird, but essentially it is limited by the material strength. Okay, so the function for this flywheel will be the storage energy to store energy, and then the objective will be maximize the kinetic energy per unit mass. And then you have the, should relate with the mass of the disk, M, then kinetic energy, J. So you have two equations that need to be related over here. So, of course, when you have kinetic energy, so you need to relate with J. J is the mass moment. So, originally, the equation will be uh, a half of mass time uh, velocity power of 2 but you need to change it into this kind of form over here so the quantity to be maximized is the energy per unit so you need to divide back this equation energy, energy divided by the mass kinetic energy divided by mass so finally you can get ke kinetic energy divided by m which is equivalent to a quarter of radius power of 2 times the uh, velocity power of 2 which is this one is the angular velocity so the constraints which is the outer radius is fixed and then must not burst and then you should have adequate toughness which is having a crack tolerance so of course the free variable will be the choice of material so given the maximum radio stress principal stress which is given by the is equations okay so this equation need to be used and then you have the stress must not exceed the yield stress okay so yield stress which is the sigma y over here and then you have the material index which need which is need to be maximized is m which is equivalent to yield stress or yield strength divided by rate, uh, density rho. So using the guideline over here, you can move upwards and downwards for the M, which is equivalent to the yield strength or fracture mm -hmm. strength divided by rho. So strength over here, density over here. So the choice are some composite carbon fiber reinforced plastic, some engineering ceramics over here, and then high strength titanium and aluminium alloys. So engineering ceramics are eliminated due to lack of toughness because this one is brittle and probably pores, have pores. And then further selection must be made on the basis of cost, energy, storage capacity for the specific materials. For example, carbon fiber reinforced plastic can store 
400 kilojoule per kilogram. Another example which is the heat storing wall. Okay, heat storing wall which is you need to store the heat from the sun. Okay, probably this wall is to be used in the high latitude region, high northern region or southern region which is having a four season or completely cold season. Okay, so the outer surface of the wall is heated by the sun at day so air blown over inner surface to extract heat at night. So from the wall, you have a fan which is blowing from in between the uh, wall so you can have a heating, natural heating. So the inner wall must be heated up up to 12 hours after outer wall is heated. So after the sun is heating the wall and then you need to sustain the heat up to 12 hours. Okay. But usually in the northern region, for, for example, the Scandinavian in the UK, the sunny day is very less like 4 hours in the winter and then the rest is completely dark. And then over here, you have the design requirements table, okay, which is the function, which is the heat storing medium. So heat storing medium means that you need to relate with the heat content or heat capacity and so on. So objective, which is to maximize the thermal energy stored per unit cost, thermal energy per unit cost. So the constraint must be heat diffusion time will be 12 hours and the wall thickness must be less than 0 0.5 meter. And then the working temperature, which is must be exceeding 100 degrees Celsius because you need to store energy as quick as possible, as much as possible. So temperature might be risen about a lot. So the free variable will be the wall thickness. Okay. Actually, it's, a, it's less, less than 0 0.5. Let's say it's much more better. Okay. And then the, the type of material. So over here, when you have the these kind of the design requirements, so you need to relate with the heat content and then heat diffusion with distance, okay, heat diffusion. And then you will have the uh, heat capacity, or oh, sorry, this one is the specific heat, CP, and then thermal diffusivity, okay, for the heat diffusion up to 12 hours and lambda, which is the thermal conductivity. Okay, in order for you to derive the first metal index, you need to eliminate free variables. So the free variable is actually W from the original equation Q, okay, the heat content. So you replace the W, okay, from the equation. So you have to use the thickness equation, okay, over here, and then insert it into this equation originally. So then you can get the performance equation. Then finally you can get the thermal conductivity divided by the thermal diffusivity. So this is the first material index. And then for the second material index is related to the thickness restriction, uh, restriction which is you need to use the thermal diffusivity uh, equation. And then since the, uh, the wall thickness should be lesser than 0 0.5 meter and then the time should be 12 hours you need to insert these two constraints into this equation then you can get the second metal index which is A need to be much more smaller compared, uh, compared to uh, 3 times uh, 10 power of 96 meter uh, square per second Okay, here is the material property charge having a thermal conductivity versus thermal diffusivity. So using these two uh, material index M1 and M2, M2 is already fixed, which is three times uh, 10 of negative six meters square per second. So you should draw a line over here, straight line, and then need to be lesser than that. So everything less bigger than this value should be neglected. And then the second 
uh, metal index, which is the line over here. Okay, so thermal conductivity divided by thermal diffusivity. So above the line would be the select, uh, the short distance material. So the limited one would be the foam, which is too porous, and the metals, the diffusivity is too high. And then the possibility would be the concrete stone bricks plus titanium. So the final choice would be the concrete because it's what uh, is very cheap and stone is the best performer at reasonable price. So it's kind of obvious. Uh. Although it's quite obvious so that you can choose either concrete or stone, but you need to actually calculate the metal index for each material. And of course, from the object, previous objectives will be the uh, as low cost as possible. So you need to have to calculate the metric index performance for each material, uh, M1, and then for concrete, stone, uh, brick, glass, and titanium. So the bigger one value for the metric index performance will be the titanium. And then the approximate cost, okay, in case for a fixed uh, density, a uh, fixed volume, okay, over here concrete is like cost like $200 per meter cubic is very cheap and then stone is $1,400 per meter cubic and the brick is also the same 1400 meter cubic per meter cubic and also glass is 10,000 per meter cubic and then the titanium which is 200,000 per meter cubic so the best choice will be the concrete Okay, good performance at minimum cost, obviously. And then the stone and brick is quite expensive. Okay, stone is much more better performance, but brick has lesser performance, but the cost is seven times as concrete. Glass, okay, should have an aesthetic uh, way for designing home like that, but not that good. And then... Titanium, which is having a good material index performance, but obviously it's very expensive. Unless you want to make a, a pressure vessel, then it should be can be used for titanium. As for the conclusion, by considering two or more charts, the properties needed to satisfy the main design requirements can be quickly assessed. So sometimes you can use two metal property charts which is related to two objectives. So the charts can be used to identify the best classes of materials and then to look in more detail with the this within this class. There are many other factors still to be considered, particularly method, manufacturing methods. So the selection made from the charts should be left quite broad to keep enough options open. For example, the wall, how to make it, and so on. And a good way to approach the problem is to use the charts to eliminate materials which will definitely not be good enough rather than to try and identify the single best material too soon in the design process. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you very much.